Enemy aircraft incoming! Our team captured the area! Enemy aircraft incoming! We hit the enemy! Enemy torpedo spotted! Enemy team captured the area! Team captured the area. Torpedoes! Enemy team captured the area. Hello everyone, it's DFA and welcome to the Ohio Guide. And yes, a brand new tier 10 premium and you're immediately thinking, is it broken like the Smolensk or is it more broken like the Puerto Rico? Well, let's find out together, shall we? Okay, let's compare the Ohio to the Montana and a couple of other ships with 8 guns at tier 10 and the Yamato, the king of snipers. And immediately we notice that the Ohio has the rapid reload one three times, no rapid reload three, no precise aiming, that's a bit strange, but okay, it's just like the Montana. Survivability is also very, very similar to the Montana, which means it is not very, very good. It's not as bad as the French, but it's not much better. The maneuverability is not bad, it's not as fast as the Montana, but it's much more maneuverable, and again, middle of the pack, it's uh, quite a maneuverable ship, that's why we're not going to emphasize on that in our equipment setup. And we will be using the deck protection modification too, instead of the propulsion module to better protect us against fire, because believe me, you will get set on fire all the time with that thing, just like the Puerto Rico. Okay, the guns, 8 guns versus the Montana's 12 guns, but these are 46 cm ones versus the Montana's 406. The range is also a little bit better, the reload is marginally slower. The accuracy is also somewhere between the Japanese, the French, and the Montana and the German at 60%. That's actually quite good, that's making it possible to snipe at range. Still, you don't have precise aiming, so you will suffer at extreme long ranges and rely on RNG. This will be somewhat compensated by the higher uh, DPS of the shell, which is comparable to the other 46 cm gun, the Yamato, at uh, 1264, so that's quite good. Your DPM is quite average, 17,000 still, that's certainly not bad, uh, but that's nowhere near, for example, the Montana. And your turret rotation, 4.5, that's pretty average, again, average, <laughs> for tier 10. Secondaries, they're very American, which means there is absolutely nothing to see here. And so finally, the AA, that's actually excellent. Excellent AA, that's an American ship, but most importantly, a very, very good range for your small caliber AA, something that I chose to improve with my equipment setup. So let's come back to the gameplay, and we do have a standard tier 10 matchmaking, lots of destroyers, a few battleships, a poor cruiser, and the midway that's going to try to set us on fire for the whole game. So yes, how will the Ohio compare to the Montana in that setup, because we do have a Montana with us. Well, you do have a lot lower DPM than the Montana, still you're able to defeat it. I did try that in training rooms, you can defeat it at 13 kilometers, it's quite close. RNG will decide who wins, but I played three battles and I won three of them. Very, very close, but still I managed to win, so the ship has nothing to fear against a Montana, for example. Um, what will make the difference is that the Montana has 12 guns and you only have 8. So yeah, you do reload a little bit faster, but that is not going to compensate. And typically at mid to short range, the Montana is going to have the upper hand. You will be dealing a little bit more damage at extreme long ranges, simply because you're more accurate and your shells will be able to simply deal more damage. So you can play that thing at range, it's not going to be as efficient as a uh, Yamato, but yeah, for example, let's just do like the intro, again another blind shot, and we can actually deal quite some damage to that Montana. How many hits do we get? We get 5 hits, that's very very good, almost 10,000 damage in one salvo, very nice. But you are not going to be as efficient against cruisers, and that is where the lack of precise aiming, like look at that, that's a perfectly stationary Brindisi, that's the perfect shot at 15.6 kilometers, and we're only going to get two hits. So that is where the lack of precise aiming will hurt you to be able to hit, I would say, smaller targets. Against battleships, you will be able to do the business, and you will be doing it just fine. Activate your rapid reload to put one salvo on down Montana before he runs away. And sure enough, we will still get a couple of hits. So RNG will decide how you will fare at long range, but still you will be doing a little bit better than the Montana, simply because of that superior accuracy and the superior caliber of the shells. 
And so it's a standard American battleship. It's a battleship which has a reasonable maneuverability, actually a little bit better than average in that case. It's, it's quite a maneuverable ship, which is why I did not emphasize on maneuverability with my equipment setup. It does have a reasonable DPM, it does have very very good AA, so you're going to position yourself quite close to your, I would say, team or ships that are quite vulnerable within your team. So for example here I'm going to leave that Montana, I'm going to position myself next to that Shiki Shima to act as an AA umbrella. And just like most of the American battleships, we will be trying to get into mid-range as soon as it's safe. Here, for example, it's absolutely not safe. We do have a Shimakaze on the left, another one on the right, so we will have to push forward because it's not very, very good to stay behind in those circumstances. Those guys will be able to come back and to haunt us. So yes, a very American space style, central location, AA umbrella, and uh, trying to get to mid-range as soon as possible. But don't worry, you can also function quite well at long range with that thing, as you have seen. Just need to pick your targets like other battleships and don't focus too much on cruisers. And so let's rejoin the Shikishima who's going to get focused by the midway because it's been a little bit too aggressive but he had the same reaction as me surrounded by Shimakazes, let's run away and we're going to try to protect him as much as we can from the enemy midway. There's a daring right in front of us and you can sense torpedoes coming our way or at least the Shikishima's way but don't worry our maneuverability is good enough to be able to dodge them so that's quite nice it's quite a nice feature of that ship I have to be honest. Uh, voilà, there you go and we're going to avoid all of them that's very very good indeed and which is why you don't go for improvement on maneuverability and instead I went for the AA range simply because that short range AA is absolutely brutal and yes you will be able to down a couple of planes with that very easily. It's not going to be booster A because you do not have the AA boost but you can certainly defend yourself. And so we're gonna try to catch that Shikishima to provide AA cover. In the meantime, we managed to switch our AP to HE shells to try against destroyers and yeah those high caliber shells can be quite effective against destroyers. But you're not going to be exceptional simply because you cannot bow tank with that ship. You've only got four guns firing forward. So yeah, you um, don't charge destroyers. <laughs> That's usually a good idea when you're in a battleship, but especially with this one. And this is where, for example, the Yamato's 46 centimeter guns will be much more useful. You will be able to present your smaller target to the destroyer and still punch them in the face with six, not four, 46 centimeter guns and HE shells. So time to focus that Kremlin, we still have HE loaded and we're going to keep it loaded because the daring is still not gone. Let's see if we can catch that Shikishima and put ourselves in front of him before he goes down because I completely missed him while I was focusing on the destroyer and I'm going to try to turn and position myself right in front of him but yeah I'm still a battleship, I'm not maneuverable enough, I missed him and it's probably going to go down because of that, so that's my mistake. I should have been more careful and use my hit points more effectively to protect it and my AA it's not going to be able to down all the planes that's getting to you. But now we can focus on that Kremlin. And so here you see that our shells are doing an excellent job, we managed to get a nice 6k citadel against that Kremlin but you need to be careful. Because here that's a ship that's only got 9 guns, again do not try to get too close to a Montana because those 12 guns are going to hurt you. Against other ships you will be doing just fine. Okay, so end of the game, time to recap what we learned and what do I think about the Ohio? Well, it's certainly a decent tier 10 premium ship. It's not broken like the Smolensk, it's not complicated to use like the Puerto Rico. It does not have any real weaknesses, it also does not have any real strength. It, it's, it's, it's good in all dimensions and that's what's make it, making it a very, very balanced ship. But unfortunately, it's missing that little something that makes me want to play a battleship. For example, it does not have that adrenaline gameplay that the Republic has, it does not have that uh, very very good sniping potential that the Yamato has, it cannot tank like the Kirk first, yeah that ship is not a very very tanky one, be careful with that, do not get, into, do not get too exposed with this one, you're going to go down very very quickly just like in the Montana. And coming back to the Montana, should you get the Ohio if you already have the Montana? I would say no, I don't think so, it's not differentiated enough. It's not as good tier for tier as for example the Missouri would be against the Iowa, but still it's a very good tier 10 ship, you certainly cannot go wrong with that. And if you want to get a feel for high level or high tier American battleship gameplay, that's certainly a very valuable option. 
But other than that, I would probably stick with my Montana at tier 10 or my Missouri at tier 9. And that would be my conclusion for this guide. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you learned a couple of interesting things. Stay safe, take care. That was Death From Above. Signing out. Bye bye.